Are Uber Eats shop and pay orders just something that's so miserable? Or could they be a viable alternative to the regular restaurant food deliveries on Uber Eats? In this video, I'm going to give you some insights into that answer and maybe shed some light if this is something that you want to try. Is it a good way to make money or is it a good way to get deactivated? My name is Russ and welcome. I'm so glad that you found me and I want you to know that I love making videos to help you. That way you can improve your earnings and you can improve your ratings and this is going to keep you on the road earning money far longer for any of these gig economy apps. So let's get started. Today I happened to get an Uber Eats shop and pay order and this one was to a Rite Aid and it was for a 12 pack of beer. I happened to already be right there at the Rite Aid. I was leaving when this order came in, so I turned right around and parked. It took me five minutes from the time I parked, going in the store, finding the beer, checking out, and getting back in the car. Now, to the customer, it was a total of nine minutes, so that's 14 minutes total. On the app, Uber Eats showed that I did it for almost 13 minutes, but that's close enough. So overall, this entire trip took 14 minutes. Bro. How much does your average food delivery take on Uber Eats? Now, there's two tips that I want to give you when you're doing shop and pay orders. The first one, when you go in there, the barcode has to line up perfectly with your phone. You can't scan it at any angle that you like. It has to be vertical and your phone vertical. This is going to save you a lot of time. You'll know you got it right because you're going to see that little green check mark when the app scans it properly. Once you finish shopping all your items, and in this case it was just one 12 pack of beer, then you're going to see the sign that says you're all set and ready to check out. Because this was beer, I got the notice saying that it's an age restricted item, and so I had to show my ID at checkout, that way they would sell me the beer. The next prompt the app is going to give you is, are you using your plus card? Yes, always use the plus card. It is possible to use your own credit card, but I would say, Try to avoid that at all costs. Use the shop and pay card. Then after you pay, the second tip that I've got for you, you need to take a picture of the receipt. Now, if you've been on other apps, it's not as easy as it seems. When you take the photo, it's going to cut off a little bit lower than you think. So stay back from the receipt enough that you can get all the pertinent information. Don't crop it in so close, otherwise you're going to miss part of the receipt. So stay back and raise it up a little bit and you'll be fine. Next, when you're headed to the delivery, when I'm a few minutes out, I like to send my notification to the customer and this is to help me get a better tip and to show that I really care about that customer's order. And I'll put that up here on the screen for you. That way you can benchmark it for yourself and just swap the names and you'll be fine. One thing that I like to do for alcohol deliveries when I'm walking up to the house is I want to start pushing through the variety of buttons to where I can scan the ID. Don't scan the ID yet because it'll time out. You need to knock on the door, the customer meets you, they're going to give you the ID. This time could go by enough that the app is going to glitch and lock up. But I push all the buttons to get to that point. That way when I first meet them I say, hi, I'm Russ with Uber Eats. I need to scan your ID, please. And then immediately they hand it to me and I scan it. And everything goes smoothly when you do it this way. So now that you've finished the order, what did you think of that? Is it really worth your time? Well, let's see how much that I made on this order. It was a total of $8 for 14 minutes. It was a $5 base pay, including the distance, and then the customer tipped $3. So 14 minutes, if you can do four of these in an hour, that works out to $32 per hour. And I would say that is great money. If I could get these all day back to back, I would do it. Now, I will caution you, there are some shop and pay orders that may not be worth your time. Say there's 60 items or 40 items. That's a lot of scanning to go through. So when you're shopping for multiple items, the likelihood is going to increase that something's going to be out of stock. This is the part of the order that slows you down because you have to contact the customer and get permission to swap it out or cancel it. You can't just eliminate it and move on with your order. So anytime that you're reaching out to the customer, I'll text them, but if I don't hear back within about a minute, I'm calling them on the phone because 
My time is valuable. And what if you have several of these going on throughout the order? You want to make sure the customer is available to help you. That is one downside of a lot of item counts on these shop and pay orders. But overall, I think you can see the pay for one 12 pack of beer, $8, taking me 14 minutes. These are great earnings. This order was easy and a lot of fun. It was one 12 pack of beer. So I think using those two tips that I gave you, it's gonna speed you up because you know you have to hold the barcode, the right orientation to your phone, and then back up when you're taking a picture of the receipt with your camera. That way you don't have to redo any work and it keeps you moving quickly. And I know I hinted at the high item count shop and pay orders. This is something that you're going to have to think through if it's worth your time. If you want to take the total pay that you're getting and divide it by how many items, if you're getting about a dollar per item, then it's good. But I caution you, if you get some 40, 60 count item shop and pay, you're going to be there a long time in the store. So hopefully the tip's really high. I definitely like any of the low item count shop and pay orders. I know I can get in and out of that store really quick and get it to the customer and on to the next order. I encourage you, do take these kind of easy low count shop and pay orders on Uber Eats. I think it's worth the time and it gets you out and get some exercise as well. Now, are all Uber Eats shop and pay orders just this easy and smooth? Even if you have a whole ton of items to shop, no way. There's many things that can go wrong with them. And I do give credit to Uber Eats. In the beginning, the app was simplistic and not really the best that it could be. They have made steady improvements over time. And if you've gotten value out of today's video, please do like the channel and video and share any comments on any shop and pay orders that you've done that have gone well and haven't gone well. Now, this brings me back to the first time I did a shop and pay order. What a nightmare. I tell you what, the app had issues and I had to call customer support for help. Wow, <laughs> what a frustrating waste of time. And after watching that, I think you're gonna really get a good feel for how much that Uber Eats has improved the app right now. So enjoy and I'll see you there.